Welcome to Miela Cooks. My name is Vicki Robb. Today we're going to be making bread and butter pickles using the Combi steam oven and our induction cooktop. So whether you have a garden full of cucumbers or you're gonna use cucumbers that you bought in the grocery store, we're gonna have some cucumbers, some onions, some really basic spices, and we'll have a fun time making bread and butter pickles. So beginning to end, this process is going to take about two hours. Most of the time is really for the cucumbers and the onions to be soaking in a salt to draw out some of the moisture. The canning time itself only takes about 10 minutes of active steaming and then 20 minutes of sitting. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut up all these cucumbers. Um, I'm going to just cut off each end because I really don't want to have those in my pickle jar. Um, and then I'm going to do about quarter inch slices. I'm going to keep the um, outside of them intact. I'm not going to peel them. And if you want to use a mandolin, you can also use a mandolin and have that really traditional crinkle cut of a uh, pickle. We're just going to use a knife today because we have so many pickles to go through here. Um, and then for our onion, they are also going to be in with the salt. So I'm gonna cut off the root end and the other end, and I'm going to just make small rounds. I don't want them to be too thick because they're going to be mixed in with these pickles. So let's just take off the outside here. So I'm going to do like quarters and then as thin as I want, I like about the same size as a pickle, so about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to use, what do I have here? One, two, three, four, five onions. They're pretty small sized, lots and lots of cucumbers, and I'm going to use one third of a cup of canning salt. So this is a pickling canning salt. It's a specific salt that you want to buy um, it helps with drying out the moisture, like I said, in the cucumbers, and uh, they're gonna sit for an hour and a half. So while I finish cutting all these up, I'll let you go and we'll come back after the hour and a half and we'll get started on the rest of the process. It's really important when you're canning that you have sanitized jars. So we took our six jars and sanitized them on the sanitized program in the Miela dishwasher. I left them in there in the warm dishwasher until I'm ready to start this stage of canning. So right before you start on the cooktop, you can take your jars out and get everything set. So they're nice and clean. Um, the pickles, the cucumbers, and the onions have been sitting for an hour and a half in that pickling salt. So now it's time to drain the liquid that is released. You can see all the liquid that's released from the cucumbers and the onions by the power of that salt. So we're going to drain that out and we're going to give it a really good rinse um, under cold water. We want to have a salty pickle, but we don't want it overly salty because we're looking for a bread and butter, not like a dill pickle. So I'm gonna let all this liquid drain out and then I'm gonna head over to the sink and I'm going to rinse them and then we'll come back and we'll get started on the cooktop. I rinse the cucumbers and the onions about three times in nice cold water. I have them setting aside in a bowl because first we're gonna start on the cooktop with our sugar and our distilled vinegar. So nothing really fancy uh, vinegar wise, just regular distilled vinegar. I'm using induction. So I have a nice uh, Le Creuset stainless pot here I'm using. And I'm gonna go right up to a nine. I want a really nice high power because I don't wanna waste my time and I wanna get this up to a boil quickly. I want that sugar to dissolve in with the vinegar. So I'm going to use my whisk and just give it a quick whisk in there. As the vinegar heats, it will dissolve the sugar. So we have some nice spices here for our bread and butter pickles. We have some mustard seed, so add that in. Ground ginger, 
turmeric, which is gonna add such a great color. So that's a really important ingredient in this recipe. And then some peppercorns. The peppercorns not only add flavor, but they look so pretty in the jar when it's finished and they're just floating around in the liquid. All right, so I give that another little whisk and I'm gonna actually go up to a boost. If you have the induction cooktop and you wonder, what is that B for? Boost is borrowing power from another burner temporarily to really get this up to a boil quickly. So especially when it's covered, um, it'll just take a few seconds for this to get up to a boil. Then we're gonna add our onions and our cucumbers. Um, so just make sure you do have your jars ready. I'm using a nice funnel here that fits, it's just for canning, it fits perfectly in the jars to keep it nice and clean. And I have my lids and my rings ready. Always use new lids. You wanna make sure that rubber seal on the lid is new and ready to go for canning so you get a good seal. And then I just have a ladle. I'm gonna use this smaller ladle to help me ladle into the funnel. So those are my tools that I'm using. I can hear this is up to a boil. So I'm gonna take the lid off. It looks so pretty already, doesn't it, the color? All right, so I'm gonna start, oh, it smells. If you guys could smell this, it's amazing. I'm gonna start, I'm just using my hands. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to uh, add some into the bottom because if I just dumped the whole bowl in, I feel like it would splatter out. So I'm gonna add a little bit in the bottom and now I can add the rest. Oop, run away. Get them all in there. Now I will use my spatula to give it a nice stir. And we're not cooking the pickles, we just need, to, or the cucumbers, we just need to get this back up to a boil because you always want a hot mixture, hot liquid going into your warm jars. Okay, so just give it a stir. We'll cover it for a few minutes till it gets back up to temperature and then we'll start filling our jars. It's time to fill our jars. I just wanted to point out, we are using our large perforated steam pan. It comes with the Combi steam oven. If you have a regular steam oven, you would wanna use also the perforated flatter tray that comes with the steam oven. So I have that handy, I'm already there, and I have my jars, so let's get filling these jars. So I have my ladle, oh, I forgot my funnel. I'm gonna use my funnel. If you don't have a funnel, just be very careful. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer. And you wanna fill it right up to this bottom line. Um, you can't have too much headroom in the jar when you are canning it makes it difficult to get a good seal. So I'll take a picture before we put them in the oven and hopefully we can get that on the video so you can see exactly where you should be filling it. So you want a nice amount of the pickle, onion, and the liquid. Um, I'm gonna fill these six jars and then any extra liquid I have, the uh, vinegar sugar mixture, I'm probably gonna put it into my batter bowl here and then I can top off all the jars so that I'm sure that I'm up to that line that I want. So that is my plan. And I think this one, I'm kind of getting to the point where that's about where I want it. All right, sounds good. And I'll just keep going through these. So we wanted to share one of our favorite pro tips that one of our favorite clients taught us, and that's she uses um, chopsticks to kind of tap down whatever is in her jar, whether it's cucumbers or cauliflower, carrots, whatever it is that she's pickling, just to kind of tap the ingredient down so you know it's in nice and tight, you can fill it a little bit more and add more liquid. I'm using my favorite tongs that someone sent me from California, I love these. So I'm just gonna tap it down a little bit on each one of these jars. Then I'm going to fill it up to that line with the liquid, just like I told you I was gonna do. And then we're going to make sure we have a really clean edge on that top rim. We wanna make sure we get a really nice clean seal. 
Then we take our newly sanitized lids with that rubber seal around it. We're gonna put it on top of the jar. We have our ring. We're gonna put it on just finger tight. It doesn't need to be super tight. Um, so make sure you don't stress about that. Once I get these all finished, I will put them on my perforated steam pan and I'll meet you at the steam oven. I wanted to point out, we did have some extra cucumber and onion mixture. So I'm gonna put that in a separate jar and just make sure I eat it within the week in the fridge. I'm not going to can that rest of the batch. So here we have our water in our combi steam oven. Ours is not plumbed. So if you do have a plumbed combi steam, you don't need to worry about that. Um, so we'll just close our panel. And I have the um, tray on shelf level one. We have the um, three level combi steam oven, but if you have the XXL, it really doesn't matter which shelf level you put it on because it is moving that steam in a convection pattern. It's gonna be even heat throughout the entire steam oven cavity. So I have my jars ready and I'm gonna turn my oven on. And like I said, this is one of our special modes. So we're gonna to go to that special modes button and we're gonna select canning, and it gives us a temperature range. The default is 195. I'm gonna make it all the way up to the highest temperature, 212, that's the temperature water boils, so that's the highest temperature you could steam at. And we're gonna set this for 10 minutes. So it's 10 minutes of steam time, and then when it's finished, we're gonna leave it in the steam oven undisturbed for an additional 20. So you can see the oven's already 78 degrees. We're gonna let it get up to temperature and then it will start the countdown. Okay, so our last 20 minutes have finished. That's the residual heat that we were using. So let's turn that timer off. And it's time to take them out and see if they've started sealing. Look at the beautiful color from that turmeric. They look so nice. Now you wanna make sure that your jars have sealed. I can see some of these have already sealed. When I push down on the center, there isn't a noise. I can hear this one isn't uh, sealed yet. So you wanna let them completely cool. They can even sometimes take a couple of hours up to overnight to seal. So we're gonna let them sit. One thing to keep in mind when you keep them in your cabinet, the last, we usually say a year. I say, if you haven't eaten it in a year, are you going to? So, um, but when you keep them in your cabinet, you wanna take the ring off and just leave the lid on, just in case there's any residual moisture underneath that ring, you don't want rust to develop. So it was so super easy. I think this is a great beginner canning recipe, and we hope that you will try this with your combi steam oven at home.